Hey again guys and welcome back. Today I'm looking at this Mustool MDS 8207 oscilloscope multimeter. Uh, Banggood sent me this for free uh, with no expectation of a positive review just for me to look at and make a video. They're not telling me what to say and in fact I don't think I would let them anyways. So anyways this thing's a $93 multimeter with an oscilloscope function. It comes with everything you see here it has like a it's like a nylon -y case. It is not soft on the inside. It's just kind of nylon material. It comes with very basic probes. Um, no threads to add any accessories on there. Um, the probes are kind of cheapy and the wire is not super flexible but definitely not as unflexible as stuff I've seen before. Um, you need three AA batteries which um, come go on and off underneath the tilting bale here. It's a little bit special because you have to put the outside ones in first because they kind of go underneath the case and then you put the middle one. So that is that. It comes with a nice, actually pretty nice manual. It's pretty descript descriptive. Uh, there was one feature that I couldn't find. It was how to put it in mute mode. It could have been just my, you know, might have just overlooked it. Uh, it comes with a temperature probe, which is great. I don't think it's acceptable these days to have a multimeter without a temperature probe or temperature sensing capabilities. And if we just take a look around here, we've got uh, AC and DC volts in the same selector. So you may have to switch back and forth. You've got ohms, capacitance, um, continuity bu buzzer, and the diode check in the same little space as well. You only have degrees C, not degrees Fahrenheit for the temperature. That's fine by me because I'm in Canada, degrees C is what we use, but Americans, which is a fairly large market, you know, much bigger than Canada, um, they need Fahrenheit, so it's an interesting omission. They have uh, HFE, that's a transistor gain from up here. I, I don't think that's, I won't even be looking at that. I don't think that's necessary these days. A milliamp range and a amp range, that's AC and DC, and you've got separate holes for them. And then here you have the AC coupled oscilloscope and the DC coupled oscilloscope uh, features and they have their own hole as well. So it's like you have a little oscilloscope in here. Now I'll turn this on and it just does a little turn on and the quiet mode is off. I hate meters that make noise when you touch buttons so I figured out how to put it in quiet mode. You press and hold F4 and then turn it on and then it'll tell you, oops, quiet mode off. I think you have to keep holding it for longer. Quiet mode on, there we go. So now it does not make any noise. And the first thing you'll notice or may not notice is the screen. Um, the screen looks okay to my eye, but it's pretty dim and the camera is not picking it up very well. Um, it's not bright, the screen is not bright. Another thing that I found is that it refreshes kind of slowly, but I guess I'll show you that after I get this all set up for us to be able to see this on camera. So let me do that and let me bring you back then. I've got my main recording lights, that side and that side, turned off. I've got the f-stop down pretty much as far as it'll go. And let's take a look at the screen. Oh no, I forgot. Every time you have to put quiet mode on by holding F4. Okay. So this is what you get. The dial is in the voltage range. I have the Kaiweetz multimeter gauntlet over to the side. Multimeter gauntlet by Kaiweetz. I know it's out of focus, but that's the best I can do at this point. And let's see how it is. We're at uh, 2.5 volts. Sticking the probes in now. That is pretty close look at that don't worry about the voltage just bleeding down oh you only need one I did not know you only need one jumper 5 volts on the dot oh 5.001 yep that's that's pretty good this should be seven and a half volts 
7.49, pretty good. And this should be 10 volts, 9.99, pretty much bang on. Nice. Now let's move it to resistance, check the resistance. Okay, this will be 10, 10 ohms resistance here. Okay, a little, little off on that one, but that one is a 1% resistance. This is 0.01 at uh, 100 ohms. 0.01 at 1K. Pretty good. 0.01 at 10K. It's consistently low. And 0.01 at... 100k. Yeah, consistently very slightly low. So the calibration might be a little off on that one. Now let's check the low current. Uh, the low current mode is actually in the same as the voltage, the same hole as the voltage. So milliamps. Now this should be like tiny. Whoops, that'll be reverse. Put that one in there. 0.55 at 10 volts. No, I think that's wrong. I think that's way off. Um, it should be 10 volts going through 100k ohms. So 0.55 milliamps. Yeah, I think that's off. Let's go 10k. Yeah, it can't measure all that well down that low. So, yeah, 1K, 10K, and 100K are giving me the same value. So, low resistance, maybe not the best. Or low current, I should say, maybe not the best. Okay, well, let's check the capacitance now. I assume I'm going to have to change into yeah, a diode continuity and capacitance so this should be 82 nano it's pretty good and 100 nano not bad that's pretty good don't forget these are only one percent tolerance so it passes the uh, the precision tests because it's pretty dang close. I wouldn't say it's perfect by any means, but it's pretty close. But that's not what you came here for. You came for the oscilloscope testing, so let's do that. I've got my crappy function gen here, uh, set somewhere between 10 and 100 hertz. I think that's the deal though. I think, you know, you don't necessarily know what your signal is going to look like. That's why you have the oscilloscope. And I'm going to hold down F4 and flip it on to DC oscilloscope. And quiet mode is on. Trust me, it's terrible without it. Now we're picking up all sorts of crap here. I'm going to turn on the function gen. Function gen is on. It's capturing something, but I'm going to go press this R button. This R button is really interesting because you see up there it says auto setting. Well, it's trying to find the perfect settings to get this thing on the screen. And there it is. Now let me stretch it up a little bit so you guys can see it. So I'm going to click Volt. And you see this changes down here is the arrows. Uh, down is up and up is down when it comes to adjusting the voltage. Don't know why. Okay, so you got one volt peak to peak. And you see the waveform is a little bit off the screen. This is the biggest fault that this the device has. You cannot bring the waveform down. You can't adjust it downwards. It always, always, if you have a DC offset, your wave is going to be up. The only way to center it is to move it to the AC coupling mode, and then it's centered. But if you have um, an like a, a DC waveform, like full, full on DC where it just goes up and down, and you want to kind of log it. Um, it will not work for you because you cannot bring it down. You can move the waveform left to right, but you cannot move it up and down. But same thing here, we can change the voltage. Uh, there we go, half a volt per division. And there we go. And now these parameters here, it shows you it's 4.65 volts peak to peak. 
uh, 0.5 volt average. If I move it to DC, you'll see that average will be up higher because it has a, yeah, four point something because it has a DC offset. Back to AC coupling. Uh, there's your volts RMS, 1.63 something, and at 15.55 hertz. And you can hit parameters, you get a different set of parameters. There's the peak to peak, uh, or pl positive peak, negative peak, uh, the duty cycle, and the period second, so 0 0.064 seconds. Now let's move it up to something a lot faster, because you expect this thing to not be able to hang with the big boys. It has a claimed 40 megahertz range, and I don't know if I believe it, but I have a max here of one megahertz. So let's just, no messing around, let's go all the way to one megahertz. That's as fast as I can go. I'm gonna hit the R and it's gonna auto set itself. And there we go. So here we have a 51% duty cycle. And if we check the parameters, 1.219 megahertz. It can actually detect a signal going that quickly. I think this thing is quite capable as a pocket oscilloscope, but my one big thing is you can't zoom into a DC or waveform with a DC offset because you cannot bring down the waveform. You have to keep it up at the offset. That's a big misstep, but other than that, this thing is actually pretty friggin nice. There's all sorts of other stuff too. You can stop the waveform. So here I can hit it and hold. You can even get cursors up so you can actually go and measure your waveform. So you can change the lower and the upper. So the lower one, not sure where the cursor is here. There we go. So you can put your cursor you know, wherever you want at the bottom here. Put your upper one you know, up here, push and hold, no, push and hold doesn't work, you still have to, to press it, and it tells you your delta, look at that, there's your delta, 2.6 volts, this thing is fantastic for some things, it went so far, but just not quite far enough, I wish they would have went a little bit further, and made it just a little bit nicer. We can hit S to go back out of hold, and we can even change this to a square wave if you're interested in seeing square waves. Okay, and look, we're way off the scale again, so I'm going to press R. Uh, honestly, the auto mode is the best way to to change uh, parameters on this because it's just so clunky with the click, click, click. It does what it needs to do, but you know, not fantastically. So here we go, we're still at two point something. I'll turn down the, the frequency here. There we go. And if you think this is round, the um, the triggering is round here. By the way, there's positive and negative trigger, which is pretty awesome. But if you think it's pretty rounded here, that's fairly normal. That's my function gen, that's not this. I'll even move it to DC, and then you can see here DC float. Now this is interesting. Now we lost the trigger value. The trigger's that little triangle there. So let me manually trigger. So I'll grab this. I'm going to change the trigger mode. Single ready, normal ready, auto. Okay, auto is fine. Um, can't change the, the type. This is top and bottom. Doesn't matter. Anyways, hit the level button and then we can move up our trigger level. Again, can't press and hold. You have to go up. There we go. And there it is. But now I cannot center this wave onto the screen because it does not let me move my zero point up and down on the screen. I really wish they would have fixed that. So then who is the MDS 8207 for? Well, it's like a hundred US dollars. So it's a fairly accurate multimeter like it does pretty well in the accuracy tests and it does do well at the pocket mult at the pocket oscilloscope thing as well but i think it falls short on several features so for one it doesn't memorize whether you want it in silent or loud mode 
I mean, that's such a small software oversight that is inexcusable to me. Another thing is I've been running this for, I don't know, all of 20 minutes between the testing and the video, and my fresh batteries are almost dead. If you can see up in the corner there, probably not, but yeah, my batteries are almost dead. Um, the leads are not leads you would expect on a $100 multimeter. The display is quite dim, and to me, the biggest nail in the coffin is you cannot move the waveform up and down. It's very important to get rid of that DC offset if you want to zoom into a wave. However, if you occasionally need an oscilloscope, this thing is way better than this thing. This is the kit that you put, put together yourself. You can buy them pre-built as well, but that's a DSO-138. I feel like the functionality on this is better than this one, aside from the fact that this one, you can move the waveform up and down. I think that for a little bit more money, there are some slightly better products out there. But that being said, this is not a bad one. I just don't know who this is for. If you want one or anything else on Banggood's website, head down to the link in the description. There's an affiliate link. You can buy stuff using that link. It'll cost you nothing, but it'll help the channel. And also, it lets Banggood know that I am the correct person to be sending stuff to for my hot take on them. Uh, stay tuned to this channel. I'll probably do a full review at some point um, because I feel like this thing needs to be used a bit more. Um, has you know, tilting bail, it's a hard cased multimeter, and I'm not sure if it'll last, but it definitely has a lot of stuff that it can do at that $100 price point. Thanks for watching.